Every guitar teacher in the world will tell you that you must know the triads. They will improve your technique, they say. They will make your chord progression sound a thousand times better. They get you all pumped up about it and you go, you know what? Yes, I will do it. I learn all the triads. And then, and only then, they tell you just how many there are across the neck with inversions in all keys. And that's where 99% of guitar students decide to simply go back to their bar chords. And that's a shame because triads are not as overwhelming as they seem. All we need is a better approach to learn in them and today I want to show you that approach and how you can learn all the triads on your guitar in the same way that I did it many many years ago and that I've used with many of my students with great results. It only involves a few steps, let's begin. First of all triads are groups of three notes stacked in consecutive thirds. If we start from the note C then we will need to have an E, a third from C and a G, a third from E. These E and G could be natural or altered but they will need to be an E and a G. There are major, minor, diminished and augmented triads and yes you have to learn all of them. Triads can be played in root position where we play all the notes consecutively starting from the root or in first inversion where we take the root and move it up an octave so we actually start from the third or in second inversion where we start from the fifth. With that bit of theory out of the way, I will now demonstrate my method for memorizing all the triads. Feel free to grab your guitar and join me. I think it's a lot more fun that way. Step one is to choose a single root in a single quality. So I'll just pick C as my root and let's go with minor as the quality. I'll also want to know exactly what notes I'm going to be playing. So I will look at the formula for a minor triad and apply it to my root. So root, minor third, perfect fifth, starting from C gives me C, E flat and G. Step two is to just play around with the minor triads. You don't have to memorize them right now, just try to play them across the fretboard, see which ones come easy to you, which ones don't, which ones you like the sound of and so on. Here's all the triads in all groups of three strings in all inversions for C minor. Don't be intimidated by their numbers, it's actually a lot easier than it looks and let me put it up for you in full screen for a couple of seconds. Feel free to pause the video, take a screenshot and you can use that for reference. If you're on my Patreon you'll be able to also download all the major, diminished and augmented triads but for the purpose of this video minor is all we need. Gradually you want to try and do away with the diagrams and play the triads even if just a few of them from memory. So for step two I just want you to sit around for a few hours or a few days and just no pressure at all enjoy the sound of these triads. Now for step three I am throwing you into the deep end of the pool. I want you to memorize the triad inversions and all on the whole fretboard. I know this is where some of you might be thinking you are dumb or crazy why don't we start with the root position and work our way up but in my experience when my students learn them all at once they actually do much much better. So all we need is a simple smart method to do it and here's how it goes. First of all I want you to find the lowest instance of any note of your triad on your lowest string which for most of you I assume would be the sixth. In my case the lowest possible note for my C minor triad is this G on the third fret of the sixth string. This is where I'll play my first triad and this will be a second inversion. So from this G on contiguous strings I'll play the whole triad G, C, E flat on frets 3, 3 and 1. Play it quite a few times, memorize it, really get to know the sound. Now I want you to find the next note up of the triad again on the 6th string and that for me is this C here on the 8th fret of the 6th string. So it's going to be in root position now. It's C, E flat, G, the frets are 8, 6 and 5. And again I'll spend a few minutes playing it, getting to know the sound. As soon as I have it memorized I'll put it together with the previous one. So I would play 3-3-1, A6-5, second inversion, root position. Now before we move up to the next note of the triad on the sixth string I want you to notice something. When I play this root position here 8-6-5, C, E flat, G, you find the same exact notes also on the 5th string on the 3rd fret, 3, 1, open, again C, E flat, G. And I want you to add this to the previous series, so you play the 2nd inversion, the root position, and the same root position 
on the fifth string. Before we continue, I want to make sure you understand that when I say these are the same notes, I don't mean that just a C, an E, and a G. They're actually these specific ones in this pitch and octave. In standard notation, these three notes and these three are indistinguishable. They are exactly the same. These, for example, are the same notes, but they're not the same pitch. Now there are no other places we can play these three notes, so let's continue on the sixth string. The next note up for me would be this E flat on the 11th fret of the sixth string, so it will be a first inversion. It will be 11, 10, and 10. E flat, G, and C. And I again will play it a few times. As soon as I have that memorized, I will add it to my collection. Now that I'm here, I will also notice that this same triad can be played with the same sound in all these different places. So we have 11, 10, 10, but also 6, 5, 5, and 1, open 1. Again, same exact pitches, so I'll add those in, and this would be my new series. just like that. If I keep moving up the 6th string, I will run into my very first triad again, but an octave higher, so on the 15th fret, and I can play it here, and again look for all possible fingerings, and I'll find a few, memorize that, and then add it to my whole series, and again, I keep playing this until it's all memorized. So we continue up the sixth string until basically we run out of notes. For example, in my C minor triad, the last available note I have with this guitar that has 22 frets is this C here on the 20th fret, where I can play a root position triad. Again, I play it across the whole thing, but now I have to move up to the fifth string. So if the last one I played was this root position, I'll move up to the first inversion here, E flat, and do that. And I keep going, then I run out of notes on the fifth string and I move up to the fourth and finally to the third until all I can play is this. This little triad there. If you do this every day, you breeze through them in no time. For step four, I want you to do the same thing in all keys. You can follow the circle of fifths. Once I have C figured out, I'll do it F, then B flat, D sharp, G sharp, and so on, until I can do it in all keys. Good news is that while this might seem daunting, all keys are really the same, and so each one will be easier than the previous one, and you'll be amazed at how fast you can actually learn this. And step five will be your final test, at least for the minor triads. You should test yourself by randomly calling out a root, an inversion, and the lowest string of your group of three strings, and see how fast you can play the triads. For example, you can go A minor, fifth string, root position, and you play it here. You could say B minor, first inversion, fourth string, and you play it here. G sharp, second inversion, uh, third string, and so on, and do it every day for a few minutes and you'll get some great results. Eventually you want to be able to call out any triad in any root, in any inversion, and on any set of strings and be able to play them instantly. There's of course a lot more to be said and learned about triads, but if you can master this, it will be a huge boost to your technique, but also to your knowledge of the guitar and your musicality. If you've enjoyed this video and found it useful, please give it a like, subscribe if you haven't done so yet, and as always keep in touch in the comments below. Don't forget to check out my Patreon and assorted beautiful things in the description below. Thanks again, and I'll see you on the next one.